don't mind us. We're just counterbalancing. Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name is Simeon. My name is Cora. And we are the S and K in SK Dance Sport. intro there. Today we're going to be talking about balance in standard dancing, but with a little bit of, um, I'd say, a, a little difference in this idea of balance today. We have five different types of balance for you guys to consider, and we're going to go from kind of the easiest, the one that makes the most sense, and we're going to go to the kind of more complicated ones. Um, this, from our experience, this is kind of causes a lot of arguments, <laughs> so I kept being on the same page with your partner is probably a good idea. Then after we go through those five different types of balances, we're gonna go through the little combination that we showed you in episode one of this series uh, and show you how we can apply those different types of balances to create a more dynamic style of dancing. If you need to remind yourself on that combination, what it looked like and go through it, we're gonna play it really quickly right here, but you, for a little bit more detail on the combination and also more details on how to get in and out of prominent position, which was the subject for our episode one, Definitely check that out. I'll link to it right up here. I'll also have the link down in the description below, and you can also get to it through our video, our in-video links at the end of today's tutorial. Individually, I am counterbalanced and individually she is counterbalanced. So we don't have to touch one another and I could redistribute the weight and still be, I'm on balance, but I'm not stacked anymore. I'm much way past stacking. So stacked is a little bit, a little bit more vertical where counterbalanced is a little bit more, uh, just not vertical. It's, you can do it in many different shapes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, I am, uh, I'm counterbalancing myself, my own body parts. She's counterbalancing her own body parts. So we're not relying on, on each other for the balance. Okay, so that's number two. Number three is counterbalance within the partnership. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, I lean back, she leans back. We as a partnership are in balance, but individually we are out of balance. Okay, so four and five we call dynamic balance. And dynamic meaning movement. You're in balance during a movement. You're counterbalancing momentum and movement. It's probably the hardest one because it, it requires uh, a connection to your partner, a sensitivity, and the timing becomes critical because if you're counterbalancing your partner at the wrong time, it just won't work. Now that term of in movement is the most important part to understanding dynamic balance because there is a difference between what we call static balance. Now static balance can be balance or counterbalance, but you're in place. So if I stand here like this, I'm static. Yeah, if Simi and I do this, but we're just standing here in place, we're static, okay? 
Dynamic, by its definition, it means that it's in movement. So we can't show you, we can't just show you a picture of a dynamic balance because it requires movement. But a great example of this would be, for instance, if you were to see a photograph of a bicyclist going around a corner and they are at this the, an angle, yeah? Well, we can't really show you that right now just standing here, but we could certainly pause at some point in our dancing and show you, ah, this is a point where we are dynamically balanced. So it means that that picture that you're seeing is just a snapshot in time to show that that person is in movement. You would intuitively know if you saw that picture of a bicyclist at that angle, you would intuitively know that they are actually in movement at the time that the picture is in. And, and the lean into the turn will depend on the momentum or how tight the turn needs to be. So right away you see that the, the, the motorcyclist or the cyclist is leaned in a lot, you can assume one of two things. Wow, he's going really fast and he's trying to make a, he's trying to make a corner or wow, he's trying to make a really tight corner. So you can kind of, it, you, you know that the dynamics are in the action it's just that you don't see it on the picture, but you can assume that it's happening. So you're counterbalancing a force by, you. I, I, the way I think of it is I'm throwing myself out of my own balance in order to counterbalance an external or a, an additional force, that force being uh, the, the momentum going forward. You know, so I'm, I'm counterbalancing something else. Uh, that I don't have to if I'm just standing still. We have two of them. We have the individual dynamic balance and the partnership. So back to the natural turn example, I think it's a good one. I'm counterbalancing my own momentum, but I also have core there. So what I could do potentially is, let's say I have uh, momentum X and it's gonna be countered by counterbalance X, right? So that's gonna counterbalance me. But maybe I don't wanna counterbalance myself because I also have her and I want the partnership to stretch and to look really big and really finished and really musical. So. I actually want her to pull me a little bit extra to the right, so maybe I will counterbalance a little less than what I need for myself because I know that she's gonna help out a little bit extra as well. So that creates a little bit more shape. Now some people might disagree with that. They say, no, 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 no. You, Simeon, you must counterbalance yourself for yourself and she's gonna counterbalance for herself as well. I personally don't believe it. I think that there are many cases where I use her to balance me yeah, out, and if, I think it's okay. Yeah, I think that if you're if you're one of those people who subscribe to the idea that you're in your own balance, your partner's in your own balance, and you touch just as a as a consequence of being near each other, I think that that actually um, it gets rid of some of the the really fun things that you can do with dancing. Definitely the know? things that you argue about. That's <laughs> true. But but again, you you lose an entire category yeah. of movements that you can explore because now you have two people with their own individual weights that are interplaying with each other. It, and it, it's the interplay of weight that's the most, that's the best part of stuff. It is, yeah. It opens a door in, into a, a world that's much more complicated and you have a lot of more options and cool things you can do, but it is more complicated. So it, it just takes takes time to, to uh, but It anyways, takes time to understand. In this natural turn, it's kind of the simplest way I can describe it. So I'm not just counterbalancing myself, I'm also relying on my partner. And let's say I do it two or three times and I keep falling over to my right. So the next time I say, well, I have a couple options. I can throw more weight to my left, so bigger step, more power, or I can sway less to my left. I'll say more straight core will do the same. You know, so I, I sort of, I'm kind of calibrating my counterbalance relative to the movement, you know? So you do it a hundred times, you figure out what you need to do. All right, so now what we're going to do, now that we've gone over those five different types of balances, we are gonna go through that combination that we taught you in our last episode of the series and uh, go through it kind of step by step and explain to you how we use these different types of balances dynamically, individually, and between the two of us to make the dancing look dynamic. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do is the traveling conch check or hover telemark if you want the official uh, name or twinkle in America. <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, this is what it looks like and we'll explain to you how we, like what kind of balance we use and, and how we do it, yeah? So she's gonna go back and then some people say side, I say back, back, but anyway, so if we're gonna go from here, we're gonna go one, two, promenade, three. So actually even the starting position, I, I'm i not really, like if she walked away, I'm not gonna fall off balance. So I definitely am on my own balance. Same with me. So I'm not, I get into my position, yeah, and then he walks away, I'm on my own balance. But we're on our own balance because we're not moving. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so let me start, we're on balance. Yeah, uh, the main place where I feel a little bit of um, counterbalance is on that promenade. 
Let's do it one more time the other way, just so you see it from a slightly different angle. So here we are. So I'm on my own balance, she's on her own balance, and we go. One, two, three. So there's a little bit of counterbalance on the promenade. So basically what's happening is on the second step, so I step forward, she steps back with a slight curve. So what happens is she's still moving in that direction to my right as I'm moving to the left. So there's this moment, I'm just gonna pretend. There's this <laughs> moment where she's, if she lets go of me here, I probably will fall over a little bit. The yeah. same thing right now, just so a really little bit. So really stretching myself this way. So my momentum is pulling me in this direction because I've been moving that way and I'm waiting longer and longer and longer to save myself with the foot, yeah? So I'm trying to take my center of gravity further away from the fulcrum from the foot to fall into this next step. And I'm using her finishing the prior turn to counterbalance this position to go there. So, and of course there's a limit to this, right? Because yes. we're connected in the body, so there's only so much we can do. But basically what causes that counterbalance is that she is finishing the prior direction of, so she's been rotating to my right, so she's going this way, this way, this way, this way, and while she's finishing that action, I'm already starting the next action, and then she comes around and follows me. Now the other thing, ladies, from your point of view is that not only am I finishing that action because from a lead and follow point of view, remember that we're supposed to always be slightly behind the man. So that means that as he's starting to rotate and send his weight out in that promenade, I'm going to delay. Right. Yeah, I'm going to keep going the other direction. What that does, is, as Simeon yeah. said, that allows us to create that counterbalance. Now, one more thing to, to keep in mind is that even when I rotate my head and my body is out in promenade position, I actually don't join him in his position, okay? Because remember what I said earlier about that circle, yeah? When I go out to promenade position, so I'm out here like this. When I turn to promenade, I need to keep my head back on my side of the circle so that even as we step out into promenade, I'm still back here. So this keeps us balanced. If I were to do da 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 and I come with him, now as a partnership, our balance point is going down, 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 down. Our momentum is not gonna move in the correct direction. Yeah, the feeling is, for me, the feeling is that it's kind of like she's a trailer and I'm pulling her along. So it kind of feels like she's, and she's not a, a heavy trailer, but it's definitely she's, She's, she's being pulled by my weight. We actually had practices that we used to do that. We would go to promenade position. I would purposely put my weight in his hand so that I get used to staying back in his hand and he got used to sending his yeah. weight so, out. So the idea is that you're pulling the lady. And, and when you say pull, it's not- It's not, not physical. Like, it's not heavy. Yes. But it's, but it's the feeling of that she's waiting for my weight to pull her and not preceding me. And so the bat, this sort of counterbalance is created by, we, would, we can say a little bit of a timing difference. Mm -hmm. I'm already doing the next, I'm already going, throwing my weight into the new direction, and she's still finishing the old one before she joins me. And so that sort of difference in, in time creates an opposition. And in our case, it's a, it's a good opposition. It creates stretch, it creates Space, physicality. elasticity. Right. It's because sometimes people try to do this. They try to, you know, they see couples are big and so they try to do it by throw you know, their body and things like this and it's yeah. just when you watch it on video it seems sort of like oh yeah it's stretching let's just do it but it's kind of created in a more uh in, nuanced yeah, way more nuanced. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, practice it so for me actually when we do things like spin turns or even spin pivots yeah that's a big one if the lady is too rushed in her rotation her action if she's too early it makes my job like infinitely more difficult. And at the same time, if either one of us, anytime we're doing a rotation, if either one of us allow our heads to come into the center of our frame, our balance point changes yeah. entirely. Which sometimes we use on purpose, right? yeah. and sometimes we just, most times with most of our students, it's not on purpose, right? The head is just falling into the center somehow. The guys are looking this way, or the girls just do this with their yeah. spine. It changes the balance of the partnership. Well, in a, in a turn, like a top, the two halves of the top have to be equal weight. Mm -hmm. We're not, so she needs to change her body position a little bit to counterbalance the weight, in the turn especially. Right. Um, so anyways, that's what makes it difficult. Anyways, so let's move on to the next one, yeah? The so, passing natural. Yeah, so passing natural, I I honestly, I don't, I don't really think about the counterbalance very much there. She says she does, but uh, you know, there's a little bit of, a little bit of stretch in her head where she came from or she delays her head and she's stretching the body towards me. I don't feel it's too much I think it's her. more for the lady and the passing natural than it is for the man. 
Yeah, because so the man just kind of swings up and past the lady. So if we, if we do this one, it goes and one, two, three. So I don't really feel a lot of, we can go a different direction. I don't feel a lot of weight or counterbalance there. Yeah, so if we do it, let's do it in full frame. Yeah, so full body. Here we go. Again, I'm on my own balance. Yeah, and we do the promenade. Now she's still finishing the old direction as I'm starting the new one. Yeah, and we go three, one, two, three. Okay, so again, I'm not, I don't feel the camera bounce too much, but you can see that she's stretched backwards. Yes, yeah, so for, for the lady, so I'll, I'll just explain my, my counterbalance within the body. The, the passing natural is really more of an individual counterbalance yeah, yeah. versus a partnership counterbalance, which is why he says he doesn't feel it. And I say, are you kidding me? So for me, when, when and, and again, in our first episode, we talked about how we get in and out of promenade position. So we had right turns into promenade, left turns into promenade, right turns out of promenade, left turns out of promenade. Why I bring that up? Because as I'm going into my second step, Simeon is going to move across in front of me to close our promenade position. Now, when he does that, I have to start to rise out of this leg, but at the same time, I'm closing my hip, right? From my promenade position, I'm closing my hip. Now, the fact that my body is rotating, right? I'm rising from my leg, but my hip is closing, those three factors combined is going to put me into a kind of an awkward position. So what I do when I arrive on this foot is I continue to move my hip and my rib cage towards him. But if I keep my head on top of my body while I do that, I'm going to knock him off his foot. So what I need to do is I need to send my head weight back a little bit. So I kind of think of it like planting my head a little bit over this foot while this part moves forward so that part of my weight is staying behind so I get to something like this, so that he can move past me, I'm swinging up, but he's not dealing with 100% of my weight. Yeah, if all 120 pounds of me went into him, it would knock him right off of his toe. He's up on his toe, remember? Yeah, so I need to do this kind of arc here, so this is my counterbalance within my body, which creates a counterbalance within the partnership that he just feels like, oh, I'm good, I'm out. Okay, the next one is a little, it's a little bit like the uh, talent So we're gonna do an open with this. Um, and it's a little bit like the- um, The traveling contract. The traveling contract. Yes. Actually, something happens in the open this that I, we might have talked about in some other steps. And I don't know how I did it on the demonstration video. I probably did it both <laughs> both ways. In an impetus, you're supposed to close the heels. I'm not, I'm, I'm you know, I don't wanna embarrass all my teachers and, and you know, <laughs> uh, make it sound like I don't know what an impetus is. I, I know it's supposed to close the heels, but because of the, in, in modern day dancing, we try to create a lot more dynamics and shapes and big space. Uh, it actually changes the man's footwork sometimes where he might have to pass his feet. So sometimes people call it a spimpetus. We call it a spimpetus when we do that. Yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> like a spin turn with spin a turn. heel turn. Spin turn in the feet, but it's a little bit more like an impetus. And, got, and he's still dancing a pivot on his heel, right. which is important so to Right, still doing that. And, right. Anyways. So uh, I don't know how I did it on the demonstration. You did it. <laughs> but again, the reason I do that is because of the, the momentum and the forces and the counterbalance causes me not to close my heels. If I close my heels, I fall over. So I, the way I deal with, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a lot of space but that throws me off balance. So what I do is I pass my foot to catch my balance. So I decided to not do a proper impetus in the feet in the attempt to create a lot more, uh, a lot more volume in the movement, and the only way I can survive it is by passing my feet. If I close my fall over. Now, so just a, a just a quick note um, for for those of you out there who are still dancing at syllabus level. If you're dancing an impetus turn, you're expected to close your feet. Yeah. Okay. So you either have to dance a clear spin turn or you have to dance a clear impetus turn. It's only when you get to open level and you're well, supposed to be dancing with much more momentum and speed, that it becomes acceptable to dance so you, with passing the feet. If you didn't have as much space and volume, and you didn't close your feet, then, it then it's looks, a mistake. Then it'll look funny. Or if you are, uh, if your frame is like this, and you're not closing your feet because you're trying to throw a lot of momentum, people it's are gonna see, people are gonna see it. The judges are gonna see it as a mistake. So just be careful. No, you got just. It's good to know. It's good to know that an impetus, you close your feet on the turn. Okay, so it's a heel turn. You close the feet. Learn it as a close. Yeah. Yeah, and just remember that as a judge myself, when I'm judging competition, I can tell if the man didn't close his feet because he had so much momentum moving past, or a man didn't close his feet because right. he doesn't know how to. Yeah. 
If there's a good reason for it, it I it's think okay. it's fine. So the, the, well, the step that we did after that natural turn, actually she goes outside partner, right? So yes. she's going outside partner, and it's gonna go one. I keep my shape to the right. That's the problem, is that in order to, because I'm already to the right, and in order to keep the shape big and big and encourage her to finish before I do the promenade, to encourage this sort of really big space, I keep my shape to the right. The way the impetus is actually supposed to be done is it goes, I think it's straight, straight left. Yeah, so it starts here and it goes straight. It might even say left here and left. Sorry, because you should have studied the book. Straight, straight, left. Straight, straight, left. Anyways, it's not right. I'm, I'm going from right to more right to even more right and then to the left. So it caused, if I did that, I'd fall over because I got her weight and my weight and nothing to counterbalance it. So by passing the feet, now I am I'm much more in balance, right? So now dancing this at an open level, you want to dance it with that slope. Right, exactly. I think that if you go to black point, you're doing the final and you do this beautiful heel to, oh, actually, actually black point, that might work. But, <laughs> but, but anyways, it's not, it's, I wouldn't be like, oh my God, that's the most beautiful heel turn and the feet touch, I wouldn't. But the space to me that I get attracted to all the movement and the space and the, the musicality of it. So I would, I would pass my feet if it was me, yeah? So um, anyway, so one more time, we're gonna go from this problem. So she's going past me, I'm, I'm going to the, I'm keeping my shape to the right. Now my, my right side is actually probably, it's not going down, it's maybe going more up than anything, but I'm still to the right. So my shape is still a little bit right. And then I start to shape to the left as she's finishing that turn. So what I'm trying to say is I started with a, so let's say I had a bank of, let's say 45 degrees, yeah? So I'm keeping the 45 into the first step. I'm not increasing it, so I'm not going deeper and deeper. Yeah, I might actually be coming out of that bank. Yeah, but I'm still right. I'm maybe not 45 anymore. I'm 40 or 30. Yeah, I keep going 20, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 9, 8, the other direction. So it's a gradual change. Right? Yeah, but yeah. The, maybe the peak of it is the natural turn. I'm the most shaped, most tilted to the right at the end of the natural turn. And even though in the impetus, I'm keeping my shape to the right, I'm probably dissolving it. So she's feeling the, the, the my left, or in her left side, she's probably feeling the upward trajectory. It's an upward trajectory, but it's not up, right? So that's, I don't know. It's yeah, now, uh, if, I, if I just jump in here and explain it from the lady's point of view, so we can do it this direction, um, just so that we show it a little bit differently. So from, actually, sorry, this direction. So from the lady's point of view, so once I step here, Okay, what's really important to note is that even though my head weight is going to continue to move past my arm, my side has to already go up with him. Okay, so this is where, you know, as Simeon said, he dances with ladies all day, yeah? If the head and the side are attached and he starts to go and my side stays, uh, he's going to complain. And then I'll fall over. Yes. So we have to do this, right? So I'm changing the shape of my body, but at the same time sending my weight still past my arm. Yeah, so that my 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 rib cage is moving with him, but because my head weight is still going past the frame, that's again going back to our traveling contra check as well. That's what creates that counterbalance position right as we're getting out to prominence. But but she's changing this because I am changing my Correct. shape too. So so let's say I'm I'm to the right and kind of repeat what I did with the partner. So I'm tilted to the right. Now as I enter the impetus, I'm actually less tilted. You know, so I'm coming out of it. So in other words, my right side is starting to recover. Yeah, but it has not recovered. It's still down, but it's on the way up, 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 on the way up and out. Big top. Big top. That's oh my gosh, saying. this one is a beast. This one, yeah, it gives a lot of trouble to people, but I, I, I don't find it terribly complicated. Big top to me, it's one of those steps where it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, something clicks, and then it's so yeah. easy. I mean, yeah. literally, you just have to understand the word pop. Under. Sure. Like that's a big part. And of again, game. top, as in that thing that you spin, right. right? And when you spin it, it stays balanced as long as the sides are equally balanced, and it keeps moving. So a, a, a tops, a tops success rate is directly tied to its ability to dynamically balance. And who knows? Maybe when they came up with the word or the name of the step, it was named for a different reason. But the way I think of it is literally a top and and. Uh, the the 
counterbalance the position that we're in, we maintain it as we turn up. Top doesn't change position as it's, it's not like flexible. Because we're flexible in many other moves, right? Right. Uh, in, a, in a big top, I feel like we enter it with a certain sort of V, Ving and stretching away from each other in a certain spacing. And it actually kind of doesn't, it doesn't it has really- It to be changed. Yeah, it doesn't really change so much in some yes. of the steps we do. So, so just to show you, yeah, we're going to promenade. I step in the three. Now she's counterbalancing me there. Yeah, she's behind me, and I step. Now from here, I'm gonna take her around me, and I'm gonna maintain that same spacing. Now the hardest part is she's turning her head. So what that does to the lady sometimes is it drops the. It, it, it doesn't maintain the counterbalance anymore. Well, going back to what what Simi has mentioned a couple times already is that the success of of any movement that depends on on counterbalance or dynamic balance has to do with timing and coordination. So the lady's head, the timing of the lady's head is ultra important here because if I go into that big top and I keep my head to the right for too long, that puts too much weight here, now I'm falling over. You could, no, you could do it though, but you just need to pull it back. Yes, which is difficult to do when you're turning that way. Yeah. Now, to tell you ladies exactly when I turn my head, okay? So, what I do is from my first step here, it's as I'm pushing out and swinging my right hip up is when I turn my head, so now. Now, I'm gonna disagree with Simeon that there is actually a specific time that you wanna turn your head. And the reason for this is because my spine is changing, uh, it's changing its angle, okay? So I'm going into promenade with, let's say, an angle something like this, yeah? The moment that I take that first step and I start to rise out of this foot, my spine is gonna change its angle. Now, to make the, the turn of the head look um, integrated and flawless, you wanna turn your head exactly coordinated with the change of the angle of your spine, right? So when my, when my spine is here, my head is right. As my hip changes, my head turns as well. And that is actually what allows me to be able to turn my head without uh, affecting the balance of the partnership. What I feel is when I dance with good ladies, I don't feel, uh, when I step into here and I'm turning, I don't feel a, a wobble. There's and, no wobble, yeah. And, and sometimes when I dance with students, the head, I know that I cannot see their head, but I know the head turned because I feel uh, yeah. so they, like basically they go they go from here and they go to that. They yes. Go from here and they go to that. Instead of from here, yeah, the shape's changing, but the head is not the head is not changing the shape. It's Correct. the shape changing the head. Yes. Good, good job, Simeon. Come. This is good. <laughs> this is smart. All right. Now, as much as Simeon is complaining about a wobble in the lady's body, oh, yeah. guys. There's a lot of opportunity for you to wobble too. Yeah, if guys wobble, it's a big problem. A because, huge problem. Because guys tend to be, I mean, I don't want to say this in front of Carmen to feel good about herself, but ladies are constantly changing positions and head and stretch. Everything is much more extreme. If the guy wobbles, it's over for the I'm just, I'm just staying left and turning on the foot. Yeah, the step is a little hard, but but I'm pretty much in the same position. So, like, Simi, do that again, yeah? And notice his position here. Now notice so, as he starts to from turn. From the foot, I'm up and left, and I just. Now he still has I'm that up, angle. Up, now I'm, as he continues, he left, still has that angle. And I'm up and left. And he still has that angle. So I really don't change it. Yeah, there's maybe a little bit of an extra sort of torsion in the upper body, but honestly, guys, don't wobble. But the, the worst thing that happens is something that I have to deal with with all of my male students is that somewhere yeah. in this area, yeah, yeah, yeah. right when they take the foot behind, you change the it's angle actually, of the spine. For me, it's earlier. I, I, I see this, it goes here, and actually this relates a little bit to the lady finishing the prior action. What my head is doing is actually it's traveling this way and toward the curtain. Yeah, so maybe I'll do it at this angle, maybe it's easier to see. So even though the partnership is going that way, my head is not. Mm. See that, so the weight of my head is actually going, it's finishing this part of the curve, this part of the curve, this part of the curve, into the next step. So it's, it, it is, this happens in the like, following slip pivot, because guys know they're going this way, and especially with the weight of the lady, it's easy to do this. That's right? one of my biggest pet peeves. So, yeah, <laughs> my, it drives me insane. Actually, I see it a lot, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of lessons doing that. But uh, yeah, so because it, it's just natural. We're moving this way, and the guy's drifting, and there's a little bit of weight for the lady, and all of a sudden it happens. But even though I'm traveling that way, I feel like my head is actually doing a, a curve back into the left along that line. So I'm moving that way, but my head's going back and left and back and left and back and left. So if I pause at any point in time, so let's say my first step, I am, I am wherever my foot is, I'm back and left. Then I take my second step on the follow step, I'm back and left. I take my first one, 
I'm back and left relative to where I'm standing. And she is back and left as well. Now here, I'm back and left, 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 back and left. So my head is going backwards in this curve. And then even here, and I'm not gonna go this way. I'm gonna go back and left, back and left into double reverse or whatever. So the big top, back to our big top, and I'll show it to you with the partner. I, even though the weight's gonna go that way, I'm going back and left, back and left. It actually counterbalances the lady. Right, so assuming just, uh, yeah, if we do that together really quickly. We'll do it from a few different angles, so. So she goes, and all the weight's gonna go that way, so I must stay in my own. So you see, he creates his curve, yeah. I'm creating my curve, and these two curves together give us and a if, balance that we if, Guys, if you do this, it's over, done. Even like, like a motorcyclist, we have a, a student in the studio that used to be a professional motorcyclist, and he, he told me, he's like, you make one error, one degree error on a fast turn when you're going like 150, 200 miles an hour, <laughs> you're out. Yeah, you're gonna have a big major accident. So well, kind of the same thing when we're doing yeah. standard. It, well, in a, but in a big top especially, one one little inch could is gonna tilt the whole partnership because there's so much turn on one foot, uh, you know. And so one inch makes a difference. So guys, make sure that when you're doing the top that you're maintaining that position. Yeah, and you could increase it possibly, but it needs to be done in a way that again, back to our counterbalance and dynamic balance, it has to be balanced, you know, mm -hmm. in the movement. The uh, next step, our or, last step, our last step is an open telemark, and uh, we we have kind of discussed uh, a couple of different ways that are pretty common. The normal open telemark, the shape is again, if we go by the book, is quite simple. We shape to the inside of the turn, which is very common for tighter turns. It's tight, common for all turns to the left. Shape to the inside of the turn. The inside is the left side, so I shape to the left, right on the turn. So uh, in our case, we've done the big top, and I finish with just a slight downward shape with my right side because I'm going to use it for the next shape. So if I do a, a, a typical telemark, I would enter it, I would bank to the left, and this banking does uh, kind of what we talked about earlier, is it puts a little bit of weight to the left to counterbalance the movement to the right. If I didn't do that, I would fall over to the right in front of the lady. So I shape, I put a little bit of weight to the left to counterbalance that. If I put too much weight to the left as I do it, I'll fall out of it. If I put too little, I'll fall to the right out. So you just need to practice and, and, and figure out, calibrate. Uh, the second way to do it, so that's the, the, the most basic one, so I'll do it one more time. So my side's going up one, two, so I'm already up at this point in time, and I do my promenade three, yeah? That's kind of a, I'd say like a, more of a basic way to do it. Sure, so purist. Clean, yeah. The other one is the, it's gonna be more of a, a, a roll, yeah? Which we're gonna go more into details right. about the rolling sways and how we create them in episode three of this video, which you'll be able to get to yeah. in the summer club. So this kind of sway is, is actually, you're, you're almost breaking the rules completely. Like, you know, the shaping to the inside of the turn is gone, no more. We're gonna shape to the outside of the turn, which typically shaping to the outside of the turn on a tight turn is like it, disaster. It feels like a roller coaster. Like, Woo! Yeah. So what's gonna happen from here is, uh, actually I'm doing it on my own one time. I'm basically, the feeling is that I'm gonna throw a ball up into the ceiling. Yeah, so I'm starting down low and I'm throwing it from down and forward and making sure that it goes up. Yeah, so it's like, uh, I imagine I'm gonna throw the ball up toward the ceiling, but I start from down low and then throw it up. Yeah, so my whole body is part of that throw up into the up into the air. So I'm not throwing it down the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it needs to go. It's like a. It, that's the action there. Now I think the hardest thing about getting these rolling sways down is the fact that you cannot do it really slowly. You have to do it with full speed, yeah. which is the reason why it's such a dynamic action. That's yeah. why we included it in our dynamic balancing. So uh, anyways, back to this. So, so that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm putting my right side forward. It's all the way up. But it's it feels like it goes down and forward and and scoop. I'm scooping scoop and up and probably the hardest part about these things is you could do it ten times and do it almost the same all ten times but only one of them is going to end it's up true. being successful <laughs> because even like when we're scooping if I scoop too low for too long and I don't get the bank on the other side it doesn't work so then I can come back and say. No, something's wrong, it's not working. I blame it on my partner. Usually that's a good way to go. That's blame it on the partner. Doesn't. Yeah, oh yeah. Blame it on the partner first and then think about the three options. <laughs> now yeah. if you take if you do it from a balanced perspective though, one of the one of the toughest things about this from the lady's point of view is the fact that you actually have to throw your head weight away from the guy. Ooh. 
dangerous. It's a dangerous thing to say, but it's true. It's very yeah. dangerous. I'm so, already scared. Because if we if we go into this and my head weight stays where it is, it doesn't work. Hey, it that's actually, it's not too bad. It's okay. No, I thought that's that was great. pretty good. No. <laughs> that was work. No, that's a, that's a, that was the bad one, right? That was a bad one. Pretty good bad one. All right. <laughs> now, if I go into this and I actually take my head weight Back. Oh, that's oh, that's much better. Actually. Yeah, because yeah. what it does is it gives him momentum that he can work with. So again, this dynamic balance action. That's why I said throw my head. If we were to stop in the middle of that, I am actually for a split second. It's scary to say. For a split second, I'm actually back weighted. Yeah, uh, let's go from this angle. I think uh, she's, she's onto something. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, it's like yeah, very helpful. Whoa, yeah. Okay. Well, we, we I stopped in the middle of it to kind of show where it was. But I think she overcooked that one. Well, I just stop. That's all. But it's it's actually I, it's, to me it feels it's related to the impetus where the lady is finishing this action while I'm starting the next one. The difference here is that we're turning to the left, so that finishing of the action is actually the head going really far that way. So when I make the turn, she's behind me. Right. When, when she doesn't do that, it feels like she's closer to me, and it, it kind of chases me out of the turn much earlier. Right. So if we do that without stopping again, so it's gonna look like bah. Oh. And then we're out. Yeah, actually, if, it sounds like if the lady does it very well, the guy. Yeah. The scoop kind of happens naturally. Yeah. yeah? I, think, I think the lady's, lady's part is really critical in these types of steps. Yes. Because, like, this time I, I could have been pretty pretty off and still survived it quite well. Yeah. So, really, oh, in, really in this particular case, here's a really good example of a place where, ladies, you are going to purposely put yourself back weighted and off balance within your own body. Because when it's baked and built into the momentum of the of the figure, it works. Yeah. Now again, it's important to note that putting my head back is not putting my head down. It's not putting my back down. So to show you a couple of bad ones, it is not going there. Oh, See oh that's God. down? Don't oh. do that. Oh, okay? Good. That was down backwards. That's a bad one. Mm -hmm. It's also not very good to go down sideways. Oh, yeah, also bad. Okay? So even though the, the, my my head weight here is kind of if Simi just puts his head his hand oh, right yeah. here, I'm actually kind of doing this when I go into the movement, yeah. But it's not there and it's not there. I don't know if you can see the difference from there, but he can feel the difference in his hand. One of them was like, yeah, okay, I feel her weight. The other was like, oh god, yeah. oh god, yeah. So I'm not sending any weight down. I'm just sending my head weight like back. Past my foot. And, and just a, um, a kind of caution or a piece of advice. When you're practicing these things, you know, it's good for her to say, hey, I'm going to try a few different ways. Just give me like five or ten tries. Like, don't say anything. Yeah, Even just let if me it try feels a few terrible, things. don't say anything. Um, and, and if it doesn't go well, don't necessarily change the approach. If you believe in the approach and you're like, you know, this makes sense, it should work, let me try it a few times. Try it and try to adjust also the timing of it, you know, and a little less, a little more, a little more left, a little more right, a little, you know, like a little earlier, a little later. Try to make those little adjustments and corrections because oftentimes it is you change the timing by a little bit and it feels amazing. Yeah, be you know? willing so, to experiment yeah. and troubleshoot instead of saying, no, no, we fell over, throw it out. Yeah, I've, I definitely think that sometimes. It feels bad, 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 and all of a sudden you did it almost the same way. Just the, the timing was a little bit different, but amazing. So, yeah. don't so don't give up. If you have an idea and you're like, you know, I really want to try this out. I've seen people do it. It's likely you can do it too. You just need to sort of figure out the the timing is, I think, the the big that's critical. The big unknown factor. One day you're early, one day you're late. One day uh, you know you've gone to work and you, something happened. You're upset and everything's tight and you're early with everything and you're not listening to the. Partner, just or, ate a big steak and something's not working right. It, the timing changes every day. So this is why I think one day you have a great practice and the next day you don't have a great practice because somehow the timing between the partners changes and for the better or worse. Yep. Counterbalance, balance, all this type of stuff. Yep. I think traditionally, if you were to go to, if you were a beginner and you wanted to go to a competition, bronze, silver, and gold, and you want to do well and you want to look good, being balanced all the time. So holding in a good position and being balanced. It's not a bad thing. It's great. It's a great this is first how, this step. This is how we teach all of our yeah. students. Yes. It's a great first step. There's a, there's a famous quote by a modern dancer named Isadora Duncan who says, she was a modern dancer, you know, modern dancer. Yeah. All those crazy stuff, right? But she trained all of her students in classical ballet. And one of her students asked her one time, why do we have to do classical ballet when we don't point our feet when we dance modern? 
And she said, you must learn to build the spine first before you learn how to break it down. Yeah. And this, so and this yeah. is, right now what we're talking about are breaking rules a little bit to create a dynamic look. But those rules, you still need to know them. You still need to have the body trained. In other words, if you can't sit up straight, first. It's very, this is impossible to do if you cannot be on balance Correct. first. Yes. Uh, so yeah, this is sort of like a much more advanced, uh, you know, we want to look flexible and have all these great moves and cool things, but yeah, if you can't stand up straight and do a, like a proper natural turn and spin turn then on this your is own, not gonna happen. Yeah. So, all right guys, that is it for today's video. Well, in yeah. our next episode, we are going to go into rolling so that's sways. these ones here yes and we're going to give you guys a little bit more information about sway in general different types of sways different types of actions that can be done in the sway plane with a focus on rolling sways those big scooping sways which are really really in fashion right now yeah all right guys i hope you guys like the video please remember to like and subscribe um make sure you hit that bell notification down there for uh notifications on new videos Leave a comment in the comment section and let us know if there's something in particular that you guys would like us to cover or if you have any particular questions on this subject. As always, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.